Welcome to part 7 of the new computer vlog. In this episode, just like the last one, I'm reevaluating how I use my computer, my workflow, things of that sort. And for this episode, I want to focus on making backups of my hard drive. That is something, believe it or not, I've never really done. I've done occasional backups of key things, very, very rarely. Every once in a while I think, hmm, I should maybe back up these files and I, I copy them once to my old crappy external hard drive that's I think 250 gigs and I don't use it anymore. Or I back up a couple files to Dropbox or recently I switched to Google Drive. So I have some stuff backed up, but I really should be making actual full images of my entire disk so that if my C drive completely tanks and breaks and I have to get a new one, I can go to a backup that will take me right back to where I was maybe a couple days prior. That would be very smart in general, but also especially because of what I do. I mean, if I haven't uploaded an episode and I still have the raw footage sitting on my hard drive and it dies, well, that's gone forever. So making regular backups would be a very good idea. To try to do that, I want something that happens regularly without my input. I don't want to have to manually image my disk. I'd like it to be an automatic thing. So let's see if we can get that to work to my satisfaction with this program here called Macrium Reflect. I looked online for what people recommended for free options for doing what I'm trying to do, and this was one of the top ones. There's a lot of paid options for programs that do this sort of thing, but Macrium has a free edition that is supposed to be pretty good and I think will have all the features that I need it to have. So you see the two disks here. This one up here is my main C drive, the one terabyte SSD. This one down here is my four terabyte mechanical external hard drive that I'm gonna use for backing up and storing old video files and things like that. Image this disk. So by default, it looks like all of the partitions are selected. I set it to go into a backups folder on my large bulk drive. There's some advanced options here, some interesting stuff. I don't believe any of this I want to change, but you can password protect your images, auto verify the image, which would probably take an extremely long time on a mechanical hard drive. I mean, my current hard drive is that I'm going to back up. This image that I'm about to make is about 343 gigabytes. To manually verify all of that on a mechanical hard drive, to go through to read 343 gigabytes of data would take a long time. So I'm just going to trust that it's fine. You can add a comment to it. You can tell your computer to shut down after making it. Next. Here's where I'm going to set the backup plan. I'm going to go with the differential backup set. Um, actually, I believe that's the only one in this list that actually works other than the create your own up here. All these others are, I think they're basically just to kind of bait you into buying the full program. So one of the features missing from the free version is you cannot create incremental backups. You can only make differential backups. The exact difference between those two, I'm not super sure. I'm pretty sure differential will be fine though. Differential backup basically means that you make a backup. Um, the first one is going to be a full backup, but the second one is only going to back up the things that have changed from the first one. There's no reason to back it all up, because if you have the first full image, plus you have an image of what's changed since the first full image, you can get there with much less data. You don't have to make a full backup every single time. That's what the differential part is. And I think incremental is very, very similar, but just slightly different in some way. But it's the same basic idea of only keeping the information you need. So it is set differential backup. Uh, I'm set to do a full backup once every month at 1 a.m. I want this to happen overnight. I don't want it to bother me while I'm actually trying to use my computer. So once every month at 1 a.m. it's going to happen starting tonight. And then the differential backups are going to happen once every day at 3 in the morning. So hopefully the couple hours will give this enough time for the full backup to be made. And then a couple hours after that, the differential backup. Now I'm a little bit confused about this, these retention rules. So these are, of course, how long you're going to keep the full and differential backups for. I've set it to keep one full backup and 30 differential backups. What I'm a little bit confused about, though, is what if I set this to two full backups and 30 differential backups. I drew this terrible picture in paint to explain my confusion, and in doing so I kind of figured something out. I also did some research on the difference between incremental and differential backups, and now I understand. Okay, so here's what I was confused about. I was thinking, what if we have a situation like this where I have two full backups and 30 differential backups, 
I think we were going to run into an issue. And the issue was this. Imagine we have that sort of a situation. We have a full backup here. We have 30 differential backups here. Just imagine there's 30 of these boxes. And then another full backup here. You can think of this as like, this full backup happened at the beginning of the month. And then for the next 30 days, we have differential backups. And then at the very beginning of the next month, we have the next full backup. If we're keeping two of these full backups, but 30 differential backups, then doesn't that mean the next time, right after this full backup, we go to make the next differential backup over here. So then we delete the oldest differential backup to make room for it like this. And then I was thinking, well, wait, if we just deleted that oldest differential backup, doesn't this differential backup rely upon the last one? Like, isn't that how differential backups work? They are what's changed since the last backup? Well, yes and no. Uh, differential backups log what has changed since the last full backup. So the only thing these need is access to the last full backup. It's incremental backups that work like what I was thinking before. Incremental backups are, let's say we have the box back here. So we have a full backup here. This incremental backup would need access to the previous backup to reconstruct the whole image. So it would need access to the full backup. And then this one would need access to the last incremental backup and so on. So they're kind of like daisy chain down the line. They're a little bit more reliant upon other backups but at the same time, also more efficient. So I think there's pros and cons to both. Of course, with the free edition, I can only use differential backups, and that seems good enough anyway. I don't think it'll be a problem. But I do wonder if I want to change this. Yeah, given that each differential backup relies upon the last full backup, I think it would be smart to make more full backups more often than once a month, like I had it set to before. So now I have it set to make a full backup once every week. And then still the same differential backup once a day. Let's just go for eight days, one day over a week, and uh, that'll be fine. Yeah, sure. I think that'll be okay. Here's the summary page. Yeah, it looks like it is intelligent about it. Uh, it says, so for the retain one full image retention rules, it says linked incremental and differential images will also be deleted. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where there's differential images, that would rely upon a full backup that's been deleted, well, the differential ones will be deleted as well. What do you want to do now? So I'm going to start the backup right away. Definitely. Also, I can save the backup and schedules as an XML backup definition file. I'm thinking the program, because it has a schedule, it should just run in the background, right? Is Macroom always just running a background service currently? I don't know how that works. I don't Because I don't want to have to start up the program. I just want it to have its scheduler running in the background just finished in 32 minutes. Somehow, I was able to write a 284 gigabyte file to this 5,000 something RPM mechanical hard drive in 32 minutes? That's a lot faster than I thought. I expected that to take at least an hour. Not bad at all. 245 gigabytes was the original size and backed it up to 283. That's pretty good compression. I checked the settings for Macrium and I didn't see anything that explicitly said run this program at startup or keep running in the background or anything like that. It just seemed to be implied that if you have a schedule it would be able to execute it even when the program is closed. And indeed I closed down the program, it's not on the taskbar or anywhere down here. And I looked in the processes and there seems to be three Macrium processes running. Between these three things I'm pretty sure it's going to execute the backup automatically in the background, which is good, that's what I want. I want to test out the differential backup and see how effective it is. So I made a new file on my desktop and just wrote some random words in it just so there is something different on the disk. There's also probably other differences with cached internet files that have changed and, and even Macrim itself probably wrote down a, some sort of a file log or something like that. So there should be some very, very small changes. Looking at the scheduled backups, I can force this differential to run right now. It ran the differential backup in a little bit less than a minute, so it was very fast. There definitely seems to be some sort of overhead or inefficiency when it goes to create a new image because the resulting file is two gigs, which on one hand is a total success because that's way smaller than almost 300 gigabytes. But on the other hand, I definitely did not change two gigs of files. I changed like maybe a couple hundred kilobytes or something. Regardless, this should result in very reasonable file sizes. Okay, I feel good about that. I'm confident that that's going to run. It's going to do what I want and it'll just run in the background and I don't have to worry about it. 
I think that's a pretty good place to end part 7 of my new computer vlog. I hope you found it interesting taking you through my thought process and also I hope that if you were like me for the vast majority of my life not making any backups whatsoever, um, I hope that this has maybe empowered you to see how easy it is. I mean that's what I've learned, it's actually really easy. I just did it in like, I mean if you discount the time that it spends actually making the image and just figuring out how to use the program, it took me all of like 10-15 minutes. Of course, you do actually have to have the room. You need a second hard drive that's big enough to hold the data from the first one to make backups, so obviously that's not accessible for everybody. But if you can swing it, it's definitely worth it. It's very, very good practice to back up your hard drive. You'll be thankful if you ever need it. If you can't, then I would encourage you to at least use something like Google Drive or a Dropbox to back up your absolutely most vital documents, you know, tax documents and personal stuff like that and whatnot. At least back up something, it's definitely worth it.